The Quiet American is a 1955 novel by English author Graham Greene. Narrated in the first person by journalist Thomas Fowler, the novel depicts the breakdown of French colonialism in Vietnam and early American involvement in the Vietnam War. A subplot concerns a love triangle between Fowler, an American CIA agent named Alden Pyle, and Fuong, a young Vietnamese woman. The novel implicitly questions the foundations of growing American involvement in Vietnam in the 1950s, exploring the subject through links among its three main characters, Fowler, Pyle and Fuong. The novel has received much attention due to its prediction of the outcome of the Vietnam War and subsequent American foreign policy since the 1950s. Green portrays Pyle as so blinded by American exceptionalism that he cannot see the calamities he brings upon the Vietnamese. The book uses Green's experiences as a war correspondent for the Times and Le Figaro in French Indochina 1951-1954. He was apparently inspired to write The Quiet American during October 1951 while driving back to Saigon from Ben Tre province, accompanied by an American aid worker who lectured him about finding a third force in Vietnam. 2. It was twice adapted for film, in 1958 and in 2002. Plot. Edit. Thomas Fowler is a British journalist in his 50s who has covered the French War in Vietnam for more than two years. He meets a young American idealist named Alden Pyle, a CIA agent working undercover. Pyle lives his life and forms his opinions based on foreign policy books written by York Harding with no real experience in Southeast Asia matters. Harding's theory is that neither communism nor colonialism are proper in foreign lands like Vietnam, but rather a third force, usually a combination of traditions, works best. When they first meet, the Ernest Pyle asks Fowler to help him understand more about the country, but the older man's cynical realism does not sink in. Pyle is certain that American power can put the third force in charge, but he knows little about Indochina and recasts it into theoretical categories. Fowler has a live-in lover, Fuong, who is only 20 years old and was previously a dancer at the Arc and Seal Rainbow on Jacareo Road, in Cholin. Her sister's intent is to arrange a marriage for Fuong that will benefit herself and her family. The sister disapproves of their relationship. Because Fowler is already married and an atheist. At a dinner with Fowler and Fuong, Pyle meets her sister, who immediately starts questioning Pyle about his viability for marriage with Fuong. Fowler goes to Fat Diem to witness a battle. Pyle travels there to tell him that he has been in love with Fuong since the first night he saw her, and that he wants to marry her. They make a toast to nothing and Pyle leaves the next day. Fowler gets a letter from Pyle thanking him for being so nice. The letter annoys Fowler because of Pyle's arrogant confidence that Fuang will leave Fowler to marry him. Meanwhile, Fowler's editor wants him to return to England. Pyle visits Fowler's residence and they ask Fuang to choose between them. She chooses Fowler, unaware that his transfer is pending. Fowler writes to his wife to ask for a divorce, in front of Fuang. Fowler and Pyle meet again in a war zone. They end up in a guard tower where they discuss topics ranging from sexual experiences to religion. Their presence endangers the local guards by attracting an attack by the Viet Minh. Pyle saves Fowler's life as they escape. Fowler returns to Saigon, where he lies to Fuong that his wife will divorce him. Pyle exposes the lie and Fuong must again choose between him and Fowler. Fuong considers her own interests realistically and without sentiment. She moves in with Pyle. Fowler writes to his editor, who decides that he can stay in Indochina for another year. Fowler goes into the midst of the battlefield to witness events. When Fowler returns to Saigon, he goes to Pyle's office to confront him, but Pyle is out. Pyle comes over later for drinks and they talk about his pending marriage to Fuong. Later that week, a bicycle bomb is detonated and many innocent civilians are killed. Fowler realizes that Pyle was involved. Pyle had allied himself with General Tay, a renegade commander he was grooming to lead the third force, described in Harding's book. Pyle thus brings disaster upon innocence, all the while certain he is bringing a third way to Vietnam. Fowler is emotionally conflicted about this discovery, but ultimately decides to aid in assassinating Pyle. Although the police suspect that Fowler is involved, they cannot prove it. Fuong goes back to Fowler as if nothing had ever happened. In the last chapter, Fowler receives a telegram from his wife in which she states that she has changed her mind and will begin divorce proceedings. The novel ends with Fowler thinking about his first meeting with, and the death of, Pyle. Major Characters Edit Thomas Fowler is a British journalist in his 50s who has been covering the French War in Vietnam for more than two years. He has become a very jaded and cynical man. 
he meets Alden Pyle and finds him naive. Throughout the book Fowler is often caught in lies and sometimes there may be speculation that he is lying to himself. Fowler's relationship with Vietnamese woman Fuong often intensifies the conflict of the story, especially between Fowler and Pyle. Alden Pyle is the, quiet American, of the title. A CIA agent working undercover, Pyle is thoughtful, soft-spoken, intellectual, serious, and idealistic. He comes from a privileged East Coast background. His father is a renowned professor of underwater erosion whose picture has appeared on the cover of Time magazine, his mother is well respected in their community. Pyle is a brilliant graduate of Harvard University. He has studied theories of government and society, and is particularly devoted to a scholar named York Harding. Harding's theory is that neither communism nor colonialism is the answer in foreign lands like Vietnam, but rather a third force, usually a combination of traditions, works best. Pyle has read Harding's numerous books many times and has adopted Harding's thinking as his own. Pyle also strives to be a member of this third force. U.S. military counterinsurgency expert Edward Lansdale, who was stationed in Vietnam 1953-1957, is sometimes cited as a model for Pyle's character. In fact Green did not meet Lansdale until after completing much of the novel. According to Green, the inspiration for the character of Pyle was Leo Hochstetter, an American serving as public affairs director for the economic aid mission in Indochina who was assumed by the French to belong to the CIA, and lectured him on the long drive back to Saigon on the necessity of finding a third force in Vietnam. 2. Fuong, Fowler's lover at the beginning of the novel, is a beautiful young Vietnamese woman who stays with him for security and protection, and leaves him for the same reason. She is considered by Fowler as a lover to be taken for granted and by Pyle as someone to be protected. Pyle's desire for Fuong was largely interpreted by critics to parallel his desire for a non-American ISED South Vietnam. Her character is never fully developed or revealed. She is never able to show her emotions, as her older sister makes decisions for her. She is named after, but not based on, a Vietnamese friend of Green's. 3. Vigat, a French inspector at the Sûreté, investigates Pyle's death. He is a man anguished between doing his duty pursuing Pyle's death and questioning Fowler and doing what is best for the country letting the matter be unsolved. He and Fowler are oddly akin in some ways, both faintly cynical and weary of the world, hence their discussion of Blaise Pascal. But they are divided by the differences of their faith. Vigat is a Roman Catholic and Fowler an atheist. The novel was popular in England and over the years has achieved notable status, being adapted into films in 1958 and most recently in 2002 by Miramax, featuring Michael Caine and Brendan Fraser and earning the former a Best Actor nomination. However, after its publication in the United States in 1956, the novel was widely condemned as anti-American. It was criticized by The New Yorker for portraying Americans as murderers, largely based on one scene in which a bomb explodes in a crowd of people. Citation needed, according to critic Philip Stratford, American readers were incensed, perhaps not so much because of the biased portrait of obtuse and destructive American innocence and idealism in Alden Pyle, but because in this case it was drawn with such acid pleasure by a middle-class English snob like Thomas Fowler whom they were all too ready to identify with Green himself. For the title of a 1958 book, The Ugly American, was a play on Green's title, However, authors Eugene Burdick and William Letterer thoroughly misunderstood the novel as their book argued that the American diplomatic corps needed to be more modern, technically proficient, and friendly in assisting third world countries, some of the exact qualities that blinded Alden Pyle. 5. French journalist Jean-Claude Pamonti's 2006 book about South Vietnamese correspondent and Viet Cong spy Pham Zon and was titled Un Vietnamien Bien Tranquille, a play on the title of Green's book which is tantamount to The Quiet Vietnamese. 6. In 2021 another book of a similar name by Scott Anderson The Quiet Americans, 4 CIA Spies at the Dawn of the Cold War, a tragedy in three parts which described CIA operators during the Cold War was published. This book title too was a play on the title of Green's book, although the themes about spycraft were different. 7. On November 5, 2019, the BBC News listed The Quiet American on its list of the 100 most inspiring novels. 8. Webigan in Vietnam in the 1950s, at the height of the tension between French colonialism and local Vietnamese communism. Thomas Fowler, a middle-aged English reporter, lives in Saigon with his ex-lover, Phuong Hay. Fowler is waiting for Alden Pyle, the young American for whom Phuong has left Fowler. After hours of waiting, a police officer calls Fowler into the police station, where Fowler learns that Pyle has been killed and thrown under a bridge.
The police inspector, Vigat, suspiciously asks Fowler what he knows about Pyle and Pyle's death. Although Fowler explains very little to Vigat, he privately remembers his relationship with Pyle, noting that Pyle, an agent for the American government, was responsible for at least 50 deaths in Vietnam. The novel then unfolds largely in flashbacks. Fowler remembers meeting Pyle at a bar. Pyle is young, handsome, and quiet, altogether unlike most of the Americans Fowler knew in Vietnam. Pyle works for the Economic Aid Mission, an American institution that tries to promote economic security in Vietnam. Pyle subscribes to the ideas of the political thinker York Harding, who believed that Vietnam and other eastern nations needed a third force, neither colonialism nor communism. Fowler finds Pyle naive, but thinks that there's something charming and endearing about his boyishness. Shortly thereafter, Fowler and Fuong, who are still lovers at this time, go to the Continental Hotel to drink and dance. That night, Fowler thinks about his turbulent relationship with Fuong. She is much younger than he, and her sister, Miss Hay, is irritated with him for being unable to marry Fuong. Fowler is married to a woman, Helen Fowler, in England. At the hotel, Fowler is surprised to find Pyle, whom he greets. Pyle, Fowler, and Fuong move on to the chalet, another local establishment, where Pyle, who speaks bad French, politely asks Fuong to dance. Pyle is a poor dancer, but his gallantry makes Fowler conscious of his own age and coarseness. A few days after Pyle meets Fuong, Fowler flies out of Saigon to Fat Diem, a town where, it's rumored, there have been communist attacks and bombings. In Fat Diem, Fowler stays with the lieutenant, a well-trained military officer who shows Fowler evidence of incredible violence and destruction. Fowler is reminded that he'll probably be forbidden to publish any information about Fat Diem, since all journalistic dispatches are rigorously censored. During his time with the lieutenant, Fowler admits that he no longer believes in God, and in fact distrusts many aspects of his Christian faith. While Fowler is staying in Fat Diem, Pyle visits him. Fowler learns, amazed, that Pyle has tracked Fowler down in only a few days. Pyle explains that he's fallen in love with Fuong, and that he wants to be honest with Fowler, since they're, best friends. Fowler is highly irritated by Pyle's manner, he senses that Pyle thinks he's going to, win, Fuong in the end, because he's younger and handsomer. Pyle leaves Fowler after less than a day. Before he returns to Saigon, Fowler tells his old friend, Pietri, that he's planning to return to England. Several weeks after his encounter with Pyle, Fowler meets with Pyle and Fuong to discuss their romantic conflict. Pyle asks Fowler to tell Fuong, in French, that he loves her and wants to live with her, and Fowler does so. Fuong is silent, and Pyle and Fowler argue about their affections for her. Fowler claims, falsely, that he's staying in Vietnam, and that he's getting a divorce from his wife. Suddenly, Fuong speaks. No, she says. With this, Pyle leaves, acknowledging that. Fuong has chosen Fowler over him. Weeks later, Fowler journeys outside Saigon to attend a festival sponsored by the Kaadaists, a religious and political group, led by the mysterious General Tay. The Kaadaists fight against both the French colonialists and the native communists. While he's at the festival, Fowler encounters Pyle, who's polite and warm to Fowler. Fowler offers to give Pyle a lift back to Saigon, but during the drive, their car runs out of gas. Fowler and Pyle walk away from their car, reasoning that they can find more gasoline in one of the nearby French outposts. Fowler leads Pyle over the walls of one such fortress, where they find two Vietnamese guards, who say and do nothing. Fowler reminds Pyle that, as, disinterested, English speakers, they can largely float through Vietnam without any trouble. Pyle succeeds in taking one of the guards' guns, and he and Fowler spend the night talking about Fuong, their sexual inadequacies, and York Harding's mysterious third force, which Pyle believes to be embodied by General Tay. Late in the night, Fowler and Pyle hear cries and shots, the Viet Minh are attacking a nearby French fortress. Suddenly, there is the sound of a megaphone outside their own fortress. Fowler guesses that the Viet Minh have found his car, and are telling the two guards to send down their English-speaking guests. Pyle quickly disarms the remaining guard and hands his gun to Fowler, together, they sneak down from the fort and away from the Viet Minh. During the descent, Fowler hurts his leg badly and nearly dies after the Viet Minh fire a bazooka at the fort. Pyle bravely carries Fowler away from the fort, and promises him that he's going to find help. Fowler curses Pyle and tells him to leave him for dead, but within a few hours, Pyle has found a French patrol, which takes both of them to safety. A few days after his adventure at the fort, 
Fowler has been discharged from the hospital with a pronounced limp. He reunites with Fuang, who informs him that he's received a telegram from his wife. In the telegram, Helen tells Fowler that she refuses to grant him a divorce, and that she suspects he'll get tired of Fuang soon enough. Fowler smokes opium with Fuang, and lies to her, saying that Helen has agreed to the divorce. Fowler receives a tip from his loyal informant, Dominguez, that he should go to a warehouse owned by Mr. Cho and Mr. Heng. At the warehouse, Fowler finds plastic moldings, which, Heng explains, Pyle has sent for processing. Fowler is unsure what Pyle is planning. Afterwards, Fowler meets Pyle, and Pyle has discovered that Fowler was lying about his divorce. Fuang's sister, Miss Hay, who understands English, learned that Fowler had failed to get the divorce from Helen. Fowler cheerfully acknowledges his deceptions, and reminds Pyle that lies and deception are his only weapons against a younger, handsomer man. Pyle accuses Fowler of manipulating Fuang for sex. Fowler insists that while he's only using Fuang for her body, she's old enough to make up her own mind what she wants. Jumping forward to two weeks after Pyle's death, Fowler visits Bigot. Fowler insists that he's not engagé, in other words, he's not politically involved with either side in Vietnam. Nevertheless, Bigot insists, Fowler has chosen sides. Privately, Fowler thinks that he's a suffering prisoner with a life sentence. The narrative moves back to the weeks after Pyle discovers Fowler's deceptions. Fuang spends more and more time with Pyle, and sees Fowler only rarely. One day, Dominguez tells Fowler to look for a story at the fountain in the center of Saigon. Fowler goes there and witnesses a huge explosion. Mr. Heng, who's also present, tells Fowler that the moldings Fowler saw at his warehouse were used to trigger explosions across Saigon. Heng stresses that he's only doing his job as a manufacturer, selling his services to the highest bidder. Fowler returns to his home to discover that Fuang has moved out altogether. He runs to the American legation, where Pyle works, to find Fuang's sister, Miss Hay, working as a typist. She informs him that Pyle is, working from home, and Fowler deduces that he's at home with Fuang. Alone, Fowler weeps for the first time in years. Fowler leaves Saigon and goes north to report on the escalating war. He witnesses French airplanes bombing innocent civilian areas, and talks with a French officer, Captain Truin, who tells him that the French are destined to lose the war in Vietnam. Fowler tries to have sex with a prostitute, but his memories of Fuang are so strong that he finds he can't perform in bed. Returning to Saigon, Fowler meets with Pyle, who tells him that he and Fuang are going to be married in the United States. Fowler feels a flash of sympathy for Fuang, who'll be out of her element in a new country. He asks Pyle to keep Fuang's interests in mind, and adds that he must not align himself with General Tay. He also accuses Pyle of planning the bicycle bombing. An accusation that Pyle doesn't deny. Half a weeks later, there is another bombing in a heavily colonial part of Saigon. Women and their babies are killed. Fowler, who is walking through the area when the explosion occurs, sees Pyle and berates him for being so indifferent to human life. Pyle admits that he planned the bombing in order to eliminate some dangerous colonial officials and didn't count on killing others. Once more we flash forward to the aftermath of Pyle's death. Fowler meets with Bigot once again and tells him that it was York Harding who killed Pyle, albeit from a long range. Vigit presses Fowler for more details of Pyle's death, and Fowler insists that he knows nothing about it. After Vigit leaves, Fowler thinks that he did, in fact, see Pyle on the night that he died, contrary to what he's just told Vigit. Shortly after explosion, Fowler goes to Heng and Chow's warehouse again, and tells them that Fowler is responsible for killing babies. Heng nods and tells Fowler that they'll deal with Pyle soon enough. Heng tells Fowler to invite Pyle to dinner at the Vier Moulin between 8.30 and 9.30. Before Howler leaves, Heng tells him, one has to take sides. If one is to remain human. Fowler invites Pyle to his flat. There, Fowler thanks Pyle for saving his life, but reiterates that Pyle is a fool for using York Harding to enact terrorist policies. Pyle insists that the dead Vietnamese have died for a noble cause. Fowler invites Pyle to dinner, as Heng has requested, and Pyle agrees to come. One night that he's supposed to meet Pyle for dinner, Fowler goes to a movie and then walks to the Vier Moulin. There, Fowler encounters a coarse American reporter, Bill Granger, who tells Fowler that his son is sick with polio. They part, uncertainly, and Fowler wonders what has become of Pyle that night. The final chapter takes place after Pyle's death. 
Fuang has returned to Fowler, and Helen has finally granted Fowler his divorce. Eva Granger's child has recovered from his polio. Fowler realizes that his life has gotten much better since Pyle's death. Nevertheless, he's still suspicious that Fuang is more in love with Pyle, and America, than with him. He wishes there were someone to whom he could say, I'm sorry. Thomas Fowler is an English journalist who was covering the war for independence in Vietnam between the French colonial army and the Viet Minh communist forces. The narrative of the novel unfurls in a nonlinear fashion. As the novel begins, Fowler discovers that an acquaintance, an American named Alden Pyle, has been murdered. The news reminds him of how he first met Pyle, and the narrative jumps back in time to that moment. Fowler's time in Vietnam has made him cynical. Though he has a wife in England, he is having an affair with a Vietnamese woman named Fuong. Miss Hay, Fuong's sister, does not approve of Fowler. Pyle introduces himself to Fowler, and Fowler is struck by Pyle's naive and academic understanding of the conflict in Vietnam. Pyle seems immediately taken with Fuong, even though she is in a relationship with Fowler. To Miss Hay, the polite and formal Pyle seems a far better match for her sister than the cynical Fowler. When Fowler travels north to report on a battle, Miss Hay invites Pyle to meet with Fuong. Fowler is surprised when Pyle arrives at the battle and declares that he loves Fuong and wants to marry her. Pyle returns to Saigon soon after, leaving a message for Fowler that thanks him for his understanding of the situation. Fowler is struck by Pyle's oddly self-confident personality. The American seems oblivious to the dangers of the war. Soon after, Fowler receives a message from his newspaper editors. He has been promoted and must return to England. He does not want to leave Vietnam, he wants to stay with Fuong. Back in Saigon, he begins to unravel a conspiracy involving Pyle in an illicit plastic manufacturing operation. Asking to remain in Vietnam, he continues to report on the war. Meanwhile, Pyle continues to make his intentions toward Fuong clear. He proposes to her, though she turns him down. Fowler writes to his wife, Helen, to ask for a divorce. He explains to Fuong that he may need to return to England. Sometime later, Fowler and Pyle are caught in the middle of a war zone. Their car runs out of fuel, and they must spend the night in a guard tower. The tower is bombed, Fowler is injured but Pyle helps him escape. They spend the night in hiding. After recovering in the hospital, Fowler learns that Helen won't consent to a divorce because of her religious beliefs. However, he tells Fuong that the divorce has been granted. He also tells this lie to Pyle, who does not believe him. Pyle tells Fuong that Fowler is lying, and Fuong leaves Fowler and moves into Pyle's apartment. Meanwhile, Fowler learns more about Pyle's connections to the smuggling operation and his links to a military leader named General Tay. Pyle confronts Fowler about his relationship with Fuong. During the argument, Fowler insinuates that he knows that Pyle is an intelligence agent who has been working with General Tay. Pyle denies any knowledge of this. During this period, Fowler's request to remain stationed in Vietnam is also granted. He will remain in the country for at least another year. Later, Fowler hears rumors that an attack is imminent. A bomb explodes in a busy square and kills many civilians. Fowler finds Pyle on the scene and forces him to confront the violence carried out by Mlike General Tay. The bomb attack will be blamed on the communists, Fowler believes, allowing men like Tay to spread propaganda and garner support. Pyle seems horrified by the violence but unrepentant. Concerned, Fowler meets with Mr. Heng, a man who works with the communists. Heng hints that Pyle may need to be assassinated. Together with Fowler, he makes arrangements for Pyle to meet Fowler at a restaurant that evening. That night, Fowler goes to the restaurant and dines alone. Later, he discovers that Pyle was murdered. The local inspector, Vigat, tries to uncover the truth about what happened. Though he believes that Fowler was involved, he cannot prove it. Pyle's murder is not solved. Fuong returns to Fowler in the wake of Pyle's murder. Helen sends a telegram announcing that she will grant Fowler a divorce. Fuong is pleased by this news, though she is reticent to talk about Pyle any longer. When she leaves to talk to her sister, Fowler is left alone in his apartment. Though he has everything he wants, he feels alone and haunted by the guilt of what he has done. The Quiet American, published in 1955, is a novel by British author Graham Greene. It is set in 1950s Vietnam, amidst French colonial struggles and the emerging American involvement. The narrative follows the complex relationship between cynical British journalist Thomas Fowler and idealistic American aid worker Alden Pyle, exploring their conflicting views on love, politics, and morality. Against the backdrop of war, 
Green weaves a thought-provoking story that delves into the consequences of foreign intervention and the clash between personal ideals and geopolitical realities. The Quiet American Summary The Quiet American is a novel by Grant Green that is set in Vietnam in the early 1950s. The story takes place in the midst of the conflict between the Viet Minh and the South Vietnamese, who are supported by the French. The novel is narrated by the protagonist, Thomas Fowler, a British war journalist who has been living in Saigon for an extended period of time. He refuses to engage in the conflict or to form opinions he instead prefers to simply report the facts. Fowler frequently disagrees with a young American named Alden Pyle, who works for the Economic Aid Mission. The novel begins with Pyle's death, but the circumstances of his murder are unknown until the novel's final chapter. Vigot, a French policeman, initially suspects Fowler in Pyle's demise, but he adamantly denies the charge. From there, the novel goes into a series of flashbacks that illustrate the erratic history between Pyle and Fowler. Soon after Pyle's arrival in Saigon, he falls in love with Fuong, Fowler's Vietnamese lover. Pyle decides that he wants to woo Fuong away from Fowler, who cannot marry her because he has a wife at home in London. Their love triangle has many twists and turns, but the climax of the novel occurs when Fowler finds out that Pyle is involved in deadly espionage with the hopes of establishing the guerrilla General Tay as an American-backed third force in the war. Pyle believes that the death of Vietnamese civilians is necessary to further the cause of democracy, but Fowler is disgusted by Pyle's overly simplified point of view. The narrative unfolds in a nonlinear fashion, allowing Green to build up the suspense surrounding the question that forms the novel's core, did Thomas Fowler have anything to do with the death of Alden Pyle? In the final chapter of The Quiet American, Fowler finally reveals to the reader, not to any of the other characters that he assisted a communist leader in assassinating Pyle after finding out that Pyle was involved in the bombing of a public square. Fowler. British journalist Thomas Fowler is the narrator and protagonist of The Quiet American. Blunt, charming, and intelligent, Fowler is a man who gets straight to the point. He has a wife named Helen in England from whom he is estranged, but during his time in Vietnam he engages in a serious affair with a young woman named Fuong. He does his best to remain professional in his work by keeping a neutral perspective on most issues. He soon discovers, however, that even he cannot ignore the pull his emotions have over both his political opinions and affairs of the heart. As the novel progresses, Green humanizes Fowler's hardened exterior by revealing his vulnerability, both when he loses Fuong to Alden Pyle and when he witnesses the terrible violence against Vietnamese civilians. Fuong Fuong is a young Vietnamese woman who has relationships with both Fowler and Pyle over the course of The Quiet American. She is quiet and reserved by nature, and maintains a stoic facade even in the most trying circumstances. Even though she is the object of two men's affections, but she rarely speaks for herself and often allows them to speak about her right front of her face. Frequently mistaken as a prostitute, Fuong's secondary role in the novel alludes to the position of Vietnamese women at this point in time. Vigot. The French policeman who interrogates Fowler about Pyle's death. He represents the overtaxed French police and the complexity of the war as he tries to figure out what happened to Alden Pyle. His conversations with Fowler prompt the reader to question Fowler's trustworthiness as a narrator. Pyle. Alden Pyle, the titular quiet American, is an ardent believer in the power and virtue of American foreign policy. His Harvard education has made him deeply dependent on academic analysis to comprehend the war, he is generally resistant to changing his opinions based on knowledge acquires in the field. Fowler frequently criticizes Pyle for being blind to what is actually happening around him. This is most evident when Pyle supplies bomb materials to General Tay in hopes that he is the third force, that the Americans will be able to back to secure democracy in French Indochina. Pyle is also involved in a love triangle with Fowler and Fuong, and manages to woo Fuong away from her relationship with Fowler with promises of marriage and a fresh start in America. Fuong returns to Fowler, however, after Pyle's untimely death. Captain Truin Fowler accompanies Captain Truin on a vertical strike during his second trip to the north. Truin takes the journalist on the strike even though he is not supposed to, showing that he is reflective and aware of the damage the French have caused. However, Captain Truin has found a way to rationalize his role in the violence. He also manages to force Fowler to re-examine his insistence against taking sides in the conflict. Even though their time together is fleeting, Captain Truin has a lasting effect on Fowler, and Fowler recalls his conversation with Truin after the bombing in the square. American Economic Attaché 
Joe, the American economic attaché, is Alvin Pyle's friend and supervisor. He is protective of Pyle and also represents the American, savior, mentality that both he and Pyle blindly embrace. Ms. Hay. Ms. Hay is Fuang's brash and outspoken elder sister. She wants to find the best financial situation for Fuang, which means securing her marriage to a wealthy foreigner. She seems to have taken on the role of a parent to her sister and aggressively pursues whichever man she feels will present their family with the most secure future. Helen. Helen is Fowler's estranged wife. Even though Fowler is with Fuang and has cheated on her in the past, she refuses to divorce him on account of her Catholic beliefs. She writes a harsh and piercing letter to Fowler in which she criticizes him for having temporary feelings for women. At the end of the novel, however, she sends a telegram agreeing to divorce him, making it legal for Fowler to marry Fuang. General Tay Pyle believes that General Tay best embodies York Harding's ideal, third force, so he partners with the guerrilla leader to win the East for democracy. He remains loyal to General Tay even after he engineers a major public bombing with massive casualties, this leads Fowler to eventually betray Pyle. Dominguez Dominguez is Fowler's hard-working Indian assistant. He has constructed an excellent intelligence system, which is how Fowler is able to discover the connection between Pyle and General Tay. York Harding York Harding is a scholar whom Pyle deeply respects. He believes that the way to solve the conflict in Vietnam is to back a powerful, third force, which must be uncorrupted by colonialism or communism. Mr. Cho Mr. Cho owns the scrap metal warehouse in which the, the explosive tins and molds are found. Mr. Cho and his assistant, Mr. Heng, help Fowler to piece together Pyle's involvement with General Tay. They belong to the Communist Party and are against Pyle's involvement in the war. Mr. Heng. Mr. Heng is Mr. Chow's assistant. He represents the interests of the Communist Party, and he Fowler go to see him after discovering Pyle's involvement in the public square bombing. Mr. Heng is responsible for killing Pyle, with Fowler's assistance. Granger. Granger is a rambunctious American journalist and Fowler's colleague. He is hardened and corrupt, a foil to Alden Pyle's idealism. Despite his appetite for booze and prostitutes, however, Granger is outspoken against the French attempts to disseminate propaganda through the international media. Granger reveals to Fowler at the end of the novel that his son is suffering from a rather severe case of polio.